I'm Vicki Heyman with the University of Wyoming Extension Service. We are going to talk about how to brown ground beef today. Now you don't just have to use beef. This technique will work for many other kinds of ground meats. Now the most important thing when buying ground meat is to look at the label and see what the lean to fat percentage is. Today I've purchased 8515 ground beef. It's a great all-purpose beef. Now if I was going to make burgers, I opt for 80-20. I like that little bit of extra fat to keep my burgers nice and juicy. And if I'm going to brown beef and throw it in the freezer, I like to use lean ground beef, something that's in the 90-10 percentage range. That way I don't have a lot of fat to drain when I am done cooking. So today, let me show you the technique to brown beef. I have my electric skillet already preheated, so I'm going to place it in the skillet. Now with my spatula, I'm going to spread the meat out because I want a lot of surface area. Now I happen to have a skillet that has a Teflon nonstick surface. If I didn't, I might even want to add a touch of oil just so that the meat doesn't stick. What I want is to get a nice brown sear on the bottom of the meat. I have one pound of beef in my skillet. Now I have enough room, I could probably add one or two more pounds of beef, but I don't want to overcrowd the skillet. If I do, then I get steam. And I don't want to steam my meat, I want to brown the meat. Although I'm showing you how to brown beef in a skillet today, there are other methods in which you can brown meat. You can use the skillet or an electric skillet. You can also brown meat in the oven. You can also get out your crock pot and brown meat. My crock pot or slow cooker has a saute browning feature. If yours does not, it might steam more than it will brown. Also, you can use the microwave to cook meat, and last but not least, the Instant Pot probably has a saute browning feature on it also. I have developed a handout, and it will be available for you so that you can see the other techniques of browning beef or any other ground meat. The meat is sizzling, and I'm gonna check to see if I have a golden brown sear on the bottom. If so, I will flip the meat over. It is golden brown and searing, so I'm flipping the meat. Now I'm going to let this side sear for a few minutes. Then I'm going to slowly start chopping up the meat into pieces. Again, I want the meat to brown, not to steam. At this point, I'm just going to keep chopping the meat until the pieces are the small, crumbled up size I desire. The meat is searing nicely. And today we're gonna make a recipe with the burger. So I'm gonna also add onions at this point in time so that they saute as well as the meat becomes nice and brown. You can put the onions alongside the meat or right along with the meat.
with this recipe, I will brown the meat and I'll use it in a chili riano casserole recipe. Now, with some meat recipes, it will have you brown the meat, but not completely cook the meat. That's because it will be used in a recipe in which the meat will continue to cook. And that's what will happen with this casserole today. But I want most of the pink to be out of it. If I'm cooking my meat continually until it's completely cooked through, I need to use an instant read thermometer and make sure that it registers 160 degrees Fahrenheit. To do that, I'll just stick the thermometer into a larger piece of beef crumble. I'm going to take this large crumble of beef and use my thermometer and see what it registers. This piece of beef says that it's 170 degrees Fahrenheit. It still has a touch of pink. Pinkness is not the way to tell if your meat is done or not. The meat might be brown and still not register 160 degrees. Or like this beef, it has a touch of pink, but I'm already up to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that my meat is done cooking, I'm going to remove it from the pan and put it on a plate lined with paper towels. This will absorb the extra grease. set that aside for just a moment and we're going to talk a little bit more about making this poblano casserole. First of all, let's talk about the peppers that it will use. There are a couple kinds of peppers that you can use. It depends on how hot you like it. This is an Anaheim pepper and it's not as dark green as a poblano. It's more thin than the poblano. Actually, the Anaheim is not as spicy as the poblano. You can get on the internet and find the Scoville scale, and it will tell you how hot your type of pepper is. On here, the Anaheim is ranked at 500 to 2500 on the scale. Now the darker poblano, it's also bigger ranks at 1,000 to 1,500 on the scale. If you go up to a jalapeno, it's a smaller green pepper, but it's spicier yet with heat. And it ranks at 25 to 8,000 on the hotness scale. So use what you like. Now, using fresh peppers in this recipe is wonderful and a great way to use anything that you get from the garden during the summer. But for convenience, I'm going to use the canned chilies today. I've actually taken the canned chilies out of the can and I've also rinsed them and drained off the liquid they come in. You can buy chilies that are in the freezer section in tubs and they are not in the liquid and so you don't need to necessarily drain and rinse them. And that's actually what I prefer to use when they're available to me. For this recipe, we have the oven heating and I have greased a casserole dish. I am going to line the casserole with half of the peppers. 
Now, the recipe calls for the four ounce can, but I like chili peppers, so I got the bigger can. It's more like seven ounces, so it's about double. And I'm just gonna spread it in the bottom of this dish. Then I am going to add my cheese. I have approximately one and a half cups of cheese. I have a Mexican blend variety, but you can use whatever you like. After that, I'm going to layer on the ground beef that we just cooked up. It smells wonderful, by the way. I'm going to smooth the beef over the cheese. Now I'm going to add that next layer of chili peppers. Again, I just spread it out over the beef. This is a really simple recipe. Now I'm going to make an egg mixture. So to do that, I'm going to take milk. I have one and a half cups of milk in my cup. And I'm going to add a fourth of a cup of flour. This will act as a thickening agent. I'm going to whisk it up. Once I get the flour whisked in, I'm going to add some spices. I'm just going to season it with a little bit of salt and pepper. Again, I'm just going to whisk it until I have a nice smooth mixture. And then I'm going to add some eggs. I have four eggs that I have beaten, and I'm going to add to this mixture at this time. Once I get this mixture beaten up well, I'm going to pour it on top of the chili, cheese, and beef mixture already in this casserole. We're going to bake this, and then we'll come back and see what a delicious, quick, and easy dish we've created. I've just pulled the chili relleno casserole out of the oven. I cooked it approximately 50 minutes, but again, it depends on the size of your container. If it's thicker, it might take a little longer. So let's take a look and see what we have. The casserole is cooked through. The eggs are done. And it smells great. So if you want this recipe and I have others, take a peek at this handout and enjoy making ground beef or any other meat for a wonderful meal.